Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Campus Consortium's grant webinar. Featuring $20,000 After Hours IT Help Desk Grant Award winner, Southeast Technical Institute. In today's presentation, Amanda Borman will share her journey on how Southeast Technical Institute received this grant. Our presenters include Ms. Amanda Borman, who is a technology manager at Southeast Technical Institute, and Annie Hugh, Vice President, Community Engagement at Campus Consortium. We will take questions at the end of today's presentation and have been typed into the chat box or questions pane in your GoToWebinar control panel. Without further ado, please allow me to present Ms. Hugh and Ms. Berman. Over to you, Ms. Hugh. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. It's uh, approximately 201 Eastern uh, here in Cleveland, Ohio. We're uh, looking forward to present uh, the case study for Southeast Technical Institute on the journey of how they applied to the grant for $20,000 for the IT help desk. They won the grant and how they have successfully gone live with the technology provider. So all in all, we'll uh, talk about uh, the entire process, the journey, the expectations, what kind of challenges they had, what was the outcome, and basically how your institution can benefit from a similar grant or discount program that we have. So before I move ahead, I'd like to uh, introduce Amanda. Amanda is the technology manager for at uh, Southeast Technical Institute at uh, uh, in South Dakota. Um, she's worked there for roughly about eight and a half years. Um, her primary role is to oversee the operations of the IT Support Center, which supports up to 2,000 to 2,500 students, and has a staff consisting of two full-time employees, uh, two to six part-time employees at any given point of time. Right. So before I pass the platform over to uh, Amanda, I'll quickly walk you through what we're going to talk about today. Uh, once again, <clears throat> I'm going to walk you through for folks who joined us new, they don't know about campus. I'll let you know a little bit about details about campus. We'll talk about the grant programs of funding opportunities that are available. We'll talk about some grant recipients, or grant award winners. We're going to then pass the platform over to Amanda, uh, <clears throat> go over uh, the problem statements and challenges, and then finally take some questions, talk a little bit about the sponsors, and then the discount with the grant program uh, with next steps. So, Roger, if you can quickly slide through. So Campus Consortium is a nonprofit organization. We were started back in 2003 by 14 universities, including University of Montana and Case Western Reserve University. From 14 universities, we went up to 2,000 universities and then finally 37,000 institutions globally. Our mission uh, for the consortium is to reduce the cost of education. And the way we do that is by partnering with several technology partners to bring subsidized uh, products and services or fund some of these to make sure that the you know we are part of the institution's success and goals that are uh, laid out every year on year basis. And those also with uh, diverse in income streams don't have much budget, they can apply for these grant programs and then get awarded. Moving forward to the next slide. Some of the grants that we have available, the most famous ones are the Mobile Campus Grant. We have the ongoing grant available now. The deadline is February 9th, 2018 to receive all applications. We also have an artificial intelligence grant. This is primarily for enrollment, making sure you don't miss that enrollment call and all queries are answered to. Uh, another key feature that we have or key grant that we have is for the password manager and multi-factor authentication, making sure that password reset is as easy as a uh, click, of course, there's no load on the help desk, and then uh, you have multi-factor authentication, making sure security is safe. Apart from that, we have certain discounts or grant programs running from time to time, so we're looking for the, the other grants coming soon in our radar. Again, talking about some of the grant award winners, they're one of you, uh, starting with Southeast Technical Institute, uh, who won the grant, came on board. We had Lemoyne Owens College, who came around the same time. We had Southwest Oklahoma State University, Franciscan University of Steubenville, Phillips uh, Seminary, Delaware Technical Community College, uh, Louisiana State University, Mayo Clinic, and then University of Arkansas System, McKendree University, just some of the grant winners from last year. If you want to see who all won the grant for 2017, you can also refer to the website. It has comprehensive details of uh, who won the grant. Finally, we've come down to Amanda. So 
Amanda has been uh, very well connected with the consortium and also the technology partner uh, ever since they onboarded last year. Uh, they went through the whole journey with the technology partner and made sure that um, you know every agent is trained, every, everybody knows how to handle the incoming operations that came in. And uh, she's been there uh, working directly with the technology partner. And there's no other better person we could think would do this uh, case study for us apart from Amanda. So Amanda, I'm going to quickly uh, unmute you and make sure that we have an audio from you. Amanda, can you confirm? Yes, I am here. Amanda, over to you. All right. Well, thank you to everybody who is um, attending today. Um, hopefully, I can answer some of the questions that you might have about um, campus and the different grants that they have, but especially this um, help desk grant that we were awarded last year. Um, as they have said previously, if you have questions throughout, go ahead and just type those into the chat window, and we'll be able to get to those after a little while. Um, so just a little bit about Southeast Tech overall. Um, Southeast Tech was founded in 1968, so we are on our 50th year this year. Um, we are a public post-secondary technical college in the state of South Dakota. Um, our typical enrollment uh, ranges from 2,000 to 2,500 students, um, and that includes full-time and part-time students. Um, we've got some students who are fully online, some who are taking classes in the evening, some who are traditional students on campus. Um, some of our systems that we utilize are shown on the screen there. Um, for our ERP, we work with Genzabar EX, um, and we also use their e-learning product for our LMS. Um, so our campus portal and our learning management system are all integrated directly with our um, ERP. And then for email, we're using on-site exchange. Those are some of the um, different systems that Black Belt Help has been assisting with support for um, since July. So just so that you're aware of some of those pieces. Uh, some of the major highlights for Southeast Tech recently are listed there as well. Um, we've had some, some recent awards that we are very proud of. Um, we've also recently gotten a Noel Levitz Retention Award. Um, we've got over 50 career building degrees, diplomas, and we've got some certificates now as well. Um, so lots of things happening at Southeast Tech and lots of things to support. Um, next slide, please. So some of the challenges that we were presented with um, as we were looking at different options, especially with um, a diverse group of students, a lot of non-traditional students, evening students, online students, even our traditional students are working on their assignments outside of normal business hours. Um, so uh, obviously, there was an increase in demand as, as there's more use in technology for some of that evening and weekend support. Um, with two full-time employees at our IT support center, we can't really justify you know, splitting their shifts and doing 24-7 coverage or anything like that. So it just wasn't in the cards for us um, to, to add the, the manpower on our own to be able to handle some of that. And we want to make sure that all of our students are getting that same level of service. So that's kind of when we when we saw the, the grant from Campus Consortium and, and decided to go that direction and see what it could do for us. Um, obviously, everybody's looking at tight budgets and trying to do what they can um, with the, the little bit that they have. Um, the big things that we wanted to make sure were, were part of that picture were that we really didn't want to have to train a company on what it means to support students, faculty, and staff in higher education. So Black Belt Help was a really good fit for us because they already work in higher education. They have already have customers that utilize the systems that we're utilizing. Um, so there wasn't going to be you know, this year-long learning curve or anything like that. Um, obviously, there's still a little bit of a learning curve, just like there is with any new employee um, local to your institution, um, but since they already know higher education, that was a huge benefit. Um, the FERPA certification was major um, because obviously there are just some of those things that a non-education company might not be familiar with that are extremely important. 
Um, another thing that was big for us is that we didn't want to have to switch to a completely different ticketing system for our incidents that are handled. Um, we've customized our ticketing system pretty dramatically, and so we wanted to make sure that we were able to continue to utilize that and that we wouldn't have to have um, information in multiple systems either, that we could still track everything in one location. Next slide, please. So as we were able to um, learn more about the Campus Consortium and the grants that they had available, um, the process moved really quite quickly. Um, so after we learned more about Black Belt Help and we did some research with other schools that had utilized them to determine um, what they liked, what they didn't like, how things had gone for their implementation. Um, obviously, that's a very important part in, in choosing any partner for something like this. Um, but after we had done that, it really moved very quickly. We found out about the, the grants being available on February 1st of last year. Um, and then we took the next week or two to, to research what that meant, to research Black Belt help. Um, and we actually submitted our grant application 10 days after we uh, found out that that grant was open. So I don't know um, the exact positions of everybody that is attending today, but I am a tech person. I am not a grant writer. And it was a very, very quick and easy process um, to get that submitted. So that was something that I was very happy with. Um, so February 10, we submitted that application. We were awarded the grant on February 21st of last year. And then um, on our end, it, things kind of slowed down and we put everything in for board approval and all of that. We got that um, accomplished the beginning of May and then we were live on July 14. So overall, a very, very quick process. Um, we had a knowledge base implemented, we had agents trained, um, and we had tested and and kind of brought them through the, the most common questions at that point. Um, and that has been very helpful. Um, the changes have been well received on campus so far. Faculty has given us some positive feedback. Um, they do appreciate that they can tell a student to contact our IT Support Center 24-7 um, um, and that Black Belt Help will answer their questions um, during our off hours. Um, for those situations where it might be kind of a one-off scenario, they still take all of the information, do all the troubleshooting they can, and then they can escalate that to our on-site support team so that we can still get that taken care of for the students. But it's been especially helpful for um, people who are just doing basic things, just getting started, um, brand new students, um, applicants who are looking to apply for scholarships or check their application status and things like that, that aren't as familiar with our systems and maybe haven't logged in before or trying something new. Um, mom and dad are helping them out when they get done with work at the end of the day. They don't have to wait for somebody to call them back and leave a message the next day. They can get helped instantly. Um, so that's been really beneficial. Um, since July, we've actually had just over 400 interactions. Um, the pool that we had gone with was about 1,000 interactions. So we're pretty well on track for that. Um, the other thing that's really nice is that the, the Black Belt Help um, company as a whole has been really flexible with us. Um, so that on those time frames where our support center is open on site, we can actually have additional agents staffed at Black Belt Help to pick up um, in those really busy time frames. And that's been a huge help to us for times like the first week of class or so, where there's just that constant um, level of service that we want to make sure that we have for, for our new students and returning students. We might have people um, assisting customers in person at our support center. And so uh, we can have someone still pick up the phone and assist. Uh, if if we're not able to pick up those calls as well. So that has been a wonderful uh, help for us over the course of the last uh, semester and a little bit here. All right. So at this point, I think we can move to the questions slide. Hey, Amanda, thank you so much for uh, drawing, drawing us towards the questions uh, for today's session. I have a question from the audience. One of the questions that we have is that uh, we do understand that you went during an implementation phase that was during registration or when uh, folks were back to school. Can you talk a little bit about how the situation was handled on campus 
ARF campus or people who called in and how were those interactions handled? Yeah, so um, when we went live, it was um, July 14. So we were kind of right in the middle of that new student registration time frame. So the week leading up to our go live, I actually had some of my staff and then myself calling to Black Belt Help just to test them with different questions that we were used to hearing on a regular basis um, and then providing feedback to them if there were any any issues that we ran into or any concerns that we might have. Um, as we got closer to um, the start of the school year, that's when we kind of started having Black Belt Help um, pick up those phone calls from off campus while we were helping the customers on campus. Um, but even as we are, um, we're about six months in here, and I review the tickets that Black Belt Help enters um, on a very regular basis, just to see if there's anything that we need to modify in our knowledge base to help them be um, to be a better resource for our students. So, for instance, I'll go in probably two to three times a week, just review their tickets. If there's any questions that I have, I can work with our account manager on that. And then we have a weekly to bi-weekly phone call with our account manager just to see how things are going. Um, there's, there's not really ever going to be an issue of um, not having enough support from Black Belt Help because you have so much control with them as far as authoring knowledge base articles. You have a, a listserv email address so that if something comes up as an emergency, uh, while you have agents on staff, you can send an email and they all get an alert to let them know what's going on. Um, but like I said, as long as, as long as you're diligent about reviewing how things are going for them and making sure that any questions they have about processes are getting answered and that any questions you have on how they've handled something are getting asked so that they can improve their services, that's kind of how we've been doing things over the course of the last six months. Um, not just the very beginning of the session there. Um, but it's one of those things where if you have a new person starting on your campus, on your staff, it takes a little bit of that back and forth um, to get them trained and up to speed as well. And so we have a little bit of that going on during this first year as well, just to make sure that we have the most robust knowledge base possible and we can um, include as many scenarios as possible because there's always going to be those things um, as you're doing the implementation and the go live. Um, you create your knowledge base and you make sure that everything's in there. And then you see two weeks in, oh, yeah, what about that kind of call? That just got escalated to us. And that's something we want them to be able to help out with. So you can create a knowledge base article within, um, within the next hour or two, and it'll be ready for the next person who gets a call like that. Amanda, a little bit on the implementation side. Once you signed your agreement and you know you, your you, your project got kicked off, what did you go through in terms of uh, the next steps of procedures? Like, did they send you some documents that they expected you to fill? How labor intensive was that? Um, since we have a fairly small staff, um, it was something that I did mostly myself with the help of my two full-time employees on occasion just to review things and make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, but once we had the board approval of that final contract, so between May and July, they sent over a discovery packet and it had various Word documents with um, questions that they had about our environment, questions they had about our processes, um, how long people keep accounts, when they get accounts, how that process works, how do they reset passwords, how do they get connected to the wireless network, what do they do if they need to print out a transcript. Some of those common questions that almost every campus is going to encounter. Um, they wanted to know what the scope of service was for after hours support versus the scope of service for on campus. But they give you very good prompts for all of those different scenarios. Um, and then in addition to filling out those questions and submitting that information to them, um, they ask you to submit any of your existing knowledge base articles. So if you have an existing knowledge base, you just simply export that information and send it over to them. They put it into their knowledge base system so that they can search it. Um, we actually chose to have lexicon implemented as well. So we get to choose 
which knowledge-based articles are just for the agents as they're helping customers versus which ones are open to the public or our customers so that they can do some self-help. Um, and that's been beneficial as well. But it's really a guided process where they give you that documentation. And then we had a weekly call with our implementation team and our account manager. So they could check on the status, see how things are going. We could ask questions back and forth on process and how things were going to work. Um, and it was, it was a very step-by-step -step process just to make sure that we were always on the same page um, and that we were ready to go by the time we were going to that go-live date. Thank you, Amanda. Could you talk a little bit about the scope of services that were taken? Was it only phone support? Was it email? Was it chat? Uh, what was the scope that was totally covered? Yeah. Um, so on our campus, we are utilizing phone support, email support, and walk-up support. We don't do any chat. Um, but Black Belt Help during after hours does both phone and email support. Um, and that all comes through our own ticketing system, which we were um, which we trained them on. So that was part of the discovery as well was how they can use our ticketing system and what we need from them for that to make sure that we can track all of those um, tickets appropriately and so that we know where different uh, cases are at, if they need to be escalated or anything, it's very easy to do that. And so yeah, as far as the phone calls and the email support, it is um, one of those things where we have our ticketing system set up so that any after hours tickets that are submitted through our online request or through email automatically get routed during after hours to our Black Belt Help agents and they get communication on that. They go into our ticketing system and they respond to our customers through email or they um, get a phone number and just give them a call back depending what needs to happen. They have the option to do remote support as well so they can they can do remote viewing and remote control of our customer uh, computers just to make things go a little bit easier to make sure that they understand what's going on on the system. And that's something that we had been utilizing previously as well. So um, our customers have been used to that and have enjoyed that as well. But again, it's one of those things where um, with Black Belt Help, it really depends on what, what your campus is doing and what your needs are and Black Belt Help is very flexible to get that implemented to work with to work with your environment already. Thank you, Amanda. One last question for the day. A lot of folks that come into these grant programs or want to tie up with uh, other third-party providers have a common uh, scare or concern that how secure it is uh, for uh, you to pass your calls over to a third-party person and uh, you know how the end user will be received. Did you face any kind of problems or was it a smooth transition? Was it secure? Are you able to monitor all of that? Do you, do you get reporting, recordings, et cetera, to give feedback? Yeah. So um, since they're working in our ticketing system, obviously we can see what their interactions have been with customers. Um, anytime I have questions on anything that might be going on, if I think that um, maybe there was something that could have been handled a little bit differently, or if I feel like I'm not sure, um, how the conversation went based on the notes, I can always request a recording of that call. So it takes probably a few hours for our account manager to provide a recording of a call so that I can listen to the call start to finish and provide any feedback that I need to. Um, as far as other security things, um, obviously data security and privacy is a big deal. That's one of those things where um, that FERPA certification comes in as a, a huge plus just because they understand the rules of higher education and the privacy that we um, adhere to so that um, we know that they're following those guidelines um, and we have found that they have been at this point. Another thing that we have is um, any of our systems that they have access to, they have to access um, through our virtual PC, uh, through VMware Horizon Client. So we have full control over their access to everything. Um, if for any reason we would doubt that there was, um, you know, if we thought that there was something that was happening that shouldn't be, we can request that any particular agent be removed from our service at any time. Um, we can change their permissions on the fly for our own systems. We can give them permissions to new systems. We can revoke permissions just based on what our needs are. So it has gone very well. I will say that initially there was some concern about having a third party with access 
um, to some of our systems, but we've kept that fairly minimal to start with um, and have been adding things as we found that they were necessary and as they have been um, proving their worth essentially to us. So um, it has been going very well considering that, you know, it's, it's a group of people that we've we've never met, but it's one of those things kind of like any vendor um, that you might allow remote support with, um, that you kind of have to weigh those pros and cons and see where things are at for your organization, but it has definitely gone well for us so far. Thank you, Amanda. That was very, very insightful and very, very informative. I'm sure the folks who joined us today have some of those questions answered on what they should look for. I know you've mentioned uh, about uh, getting introductions to other clients and members, and uh, we highly recommend that is because you should know, uh, you know, their challenges, outcomes, whether it be bad or good. At least you know what you're getting into before, you know, you're, you're picking up a new responsibility of getting something that is going to a third-party provider, right? So uh, thank you so much, Amanda, for sharing those insights. I'm going to move over to the next segment of our uh, webinar. That is, uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, that's Black Belt Help and HDI. HDI has been instrumental in uh, giving training programs for IT Help and Solutions, and has thereby been also sharing a lot of feedback on how, uh, you know, help us help that agents should be soft skills or uh, be able to handle calls. So they've, they've been a pioneer on that. The second one is Black Belt Health, that did a fantastic job. They've got some of the biggest names with them, including California Community College System um, with them. So they're, they're not only doing small shops, but they're doing big shops, such as uh, the California Community College System, uh, to start with Colorado Community College System. So they have a couple of systems. That they're even doing the Massachusetts uh, Community College System as well. Uh, so Black Health has been there in higher ed. They've got a lot of clients. Uh, if you go to the website, you'll see a lot of other things coming through. Uh, talking about uh, next steps, they've got roughly about 200 plus clients. They support about 800,000 uh, interactions annually. Um, they're based out of Cleveland, Ohio. They have executive offices in uh, Chicago, Illinois. They give a lot of uh, types of support from IT support, uh, 24 by 7 after hours for enrollment, financial aid, student services, learning management systems. Uh, so basically, they've got all of these under their uh, belt. Uh, <laughs> uh, moving forward to the next slide, uh, HDI again, if you really need uh, help in getting your professional trained, you can reach out to HDI where they will help your technical support professionals get certifications on how they need to handle uh, resources and clients. They've been doing it since 1989. Uh, please let me know if you want to get in touch with the contact there. I'll, I'll route you in the right direction. So for folks, thank you so much once again for dialing in. Amanda, it was really, really nice to have you on this webinar. Thank you so much for your time and effort. It was great to know that you're one successful institution who's gone live with uh, whatever money that was funded for the grant. Have a great day.